Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. When we gaze up at a brilliant starry sky, it's easy to get lost in the grand design, the beauty, the serenity of it all. When you take a closer look, however, there's a lot going on up there. For all the stars you see, and for all the billions out there you don't, there exists a story. The cosmos are a giant open book just waiting to be read. This is one of such tales, the tale of the star, Ori. Ori was a princess born unto the universe itself, the Sky King, Tente. Ori was quite the skilled weaver. Stars from all around would seek out the beautiful clothes she created. The demand was so high, she had no time to fall in love and grew depressed. Attempting to rectify the situation, the Sky King arranged for her to meet the cowherder star Kengyu, who resided on the opposite side of the Amanogawa River, also known as the Milky Way. The two hit it off almost immediately and spent every waking moment together. Ori's weaving demands increasingly became neglected, and Kengyu's oxen left unattended ran roughshod through the heavens. This made the Sky King very angry. He sent Kengyu back, far, far away across the Milky Way, and forbade the two from seeing each other. Once again, Ori fell into a depression, and her weaving felt the effects. To keep his daughter happy, he allowed her to meet with Kengyu once a year. On the seventh day of the seventh month, magpies would fly in and build a bridge across the Milky Way, and they would finally rendezvous. These two star-crossed lovers would make that single day worth a thousand lifetimes. In present-day Japan, this is a day of celebration known as the Tanabata Festival, or Evening of the Seventh, a holiday with heavy emphasis on outdoor frolicking and stargazing. This, incidentally, is one of Akane Tendo's favorite days of the year. On the day of the Tanabata Festival, she can be found on her balcony, telescope in hand, watching over the two celestial lovers and their union. But one fateful year, Akane looked up, and they were nowhere to be found. This was no mistake on her part. Something was definitely wrong. Sure enough, she then saw a shooting star, followed by a blinding white light. She followed the trail to its impact point, and came face to face with the unthinkable. There she was, live and in the flesh. The weaving princess herself, Ori. She is a celestial being, the living, breathing incarnation of a star. But to the naked eye, she is human as human can be. Being somewhat of a childhood hero to Akane Tendo, Ori immediately found a friend in her, and the two get along like sisters. Though Ori is technically royalty, she is surprisingly down to earth, not stuck up in the slightest. In fact, the main reason why she and Akane hit it off so well is that they are like mirror images of each other. They are both good-hearted, both a little hot-tempered. Even when they spar in the dojo, they read each other's moves like clockwork. And, just like Akane, Princess Ori is far from perfect, which is highly evident in her lackluster skills as a homemaker. Though she is a princess, and though she is a shining star in human form, she is a typical girl-next-door personality. So whatever became of her boyfriend, Kengyu? Well, actually, he is the reason Princess Ori has descended to Earth. The two came from strong martial arts backgrounds and often sparred together, building their skills. While Ori continued to improve, Kengyu was a complete screw-up. Truth be told, Kengyu was a daydreamer, lazily eking his way through life, gallivanting with his beloved pet cow, Muchan. Time and time again, Ori would berate Kengyu for his insolence, but her cruel words never registered, or at least, so she thought. Fast approaching their wedding day, Ori received a letter that Kengyu, humbled and embarrassed, left with Mu Chan to at last hone his skills and become the world's greatest martial artist. Ori's father gave her an ultimatum that if she didn't find Kengyu by July 7th, she would be chosen a new fiancé. 
Now, even though Ori and Kengyu have an explosive relationship at best, there is no denying the love the two of them share. They are like Akane and Ranma in that respect. So once the word spread that her husband was spotted committing Dojo Yabori, dojo on, yabori. on Earth, she descended from the Milky Way to search for him. When we last left Kengyu, he was a drifty lollygagger who would just as soon make out with a cow than actually train. But apparently now he's a changed man. In fact, he can be considered a martial arts master of the highest order. With his faithful Muchan watching attentively in the sidelines, Kengyu competes in street fights with some of the greatest fighters from around the world. His flashy, patented, superstar maneuver is so fast and distracting that nobody, not even the audience, knows exactly what it is. And Kengyu ain't telling. After creating a great degree of distance between he and his opponent, Kengyu surrounds himself with a surge of brilliant, distracting green light and somehow administers the blow from behind his opponent's head. To reveal this top secret information would expose him and unravel his entire strategy. I know the truth, and you can too if you just tune in. A surefire way to defend against the Kengyu superstar maneuver is for the opponent to intentionally corner himself. That way the blow cannot find the back of the skull. But this also puts the opponent at a disadvantage, or it is impossible to parry Kengyu's relentless attacks and keep one's ground at the same time. The key to defeating this brash young man just may be a secret lost to the stars. So the next time you see a shooting star blaze across the distant horizon, think of it as a plot twist, a sharp turn in an otherwise stagnant tale, a celestial being coming down to Earth to settle some unfinished business. When you look, into Princess Ori's eyes. What do you see? You see a charming young woman with a level head and a good soul. She would help a total stranger at the drop of a hat. She has a warm smile and a homely kind of beauty. She is easy to relate to and would be a great friend to anybody. She is real. But don't be fooled by your eyes, for she is not real. She is a being of the cosmos, a thing of fairy tales, a twinkling star to wish upon at night. And while she and her oft-witless fiancé Kengyu may have hit a rough patch, and their conflicting personalities may ensure some degree of rocky terrain ahead, their relationship is storybook. And with the help of good friends like Ranma and Akane, just as in every storybook we read as children, Princess Ori, the cowherder star Kengyu, and yes, you too, Mujan, will all live happily ever after. Until next time, meet you at the Milky Way. This has been a Ranma One Half character profile. Special thanks go out to Owen Don 2 and Pigtail Princess for the requests.